Good morning. Let's stand and listen to a word from the scripture. Go sit down, baby. It's okay. From Psalm 86, 4 through 5. Give me happiness, O Lord, for I give myself to you. O Lord, you are so good, so ready to forgive, so full of unfailing love that for all who ask for your help. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the excitement that was here all week last week, and we thank you for all the children that came, and we thank you that we were able to tell them more and more about Jesus. Lord, I pray that you be with us today. Help us to hear your word and to obey your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. as we sing Send the Light. Continue as we sing, Shine, Jesus, Shine.
Heavenly Father, as we have gathered together in your house, we have done so to worship and honor you, the one who is the light, who has the one who has have brought the light into the world, both the physical light and the light of the world, Jesus Christ. And so, Lord, as we have gathered, we understand and we recognize you as the Holy One, the Righteous One, the One who forgives, the One who is filled with, with mercy and faithfulness. What an awesome God you are. So we know that you're present with us. You have promised in your word that you are in the presence of all who gather together in your name. And we know, Lord, you have a word for us for this day from your word. And, and so, Lord, we just pray that we would be able to hear that word, take it to heart, and put it into practice in our own lives. Father, we thank you that we'll hear that word of comfort, encouragement, that word of challenge this day, and that we might... Go forth from here with a fresh anointing of your power and your Holy Spirit. We pray this in Jesus' holy name. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Well, it is good to have you all here in the Lord's house on this, his day. I know the Lord has a blessing for you for having been here. Uh, it is a great day. We had a great week. I don't know how many kids we had, 50 plus Maybe even 60 registered, I don't know. 68 registered, there you go. And so attendance each night was almost up to that, probably not that many every night, but 68 were registered. And how many adults did we have? Adults and workers. 28, 30 or so, yeah, about 28 workers. Uh, and that's counting those that were uh, from uh, middle school all the way up through uh, the adults that were helping. We had middle school and high school kids that were working as our crew leaders, uh, taking uh, the, the different groups around to all the stations, and so that was, that was awesome to see them. Most of them had grown up coming to our vacation Bible schools and have wanted to continue uh, being a part of it, and so they, they want to come and be a part of it, so that's great. Um, again, thank you everyone who had a part in either decoration or in preparation or in the actual uh, implementation of the program altogether. We got lots and lots of compliments on our video. Yes, many, 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 many compliments uh, from the parents on the decorations. Uh, they thought they were awesome. The door, uh, the, the sliding door is just awesome. The rocket behind me is great. Uh, the, the satellite dish, Randy also procured that. Uh, I don't know where he got it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I think it was one of Casey's old ones that, <laughs> yeah. But uh, we're glad to have it. And of course, this is out of our backyard. Uh, our kids, our grandkids recognize that. So uh, it's a great landscape, moonscape that we were able to put together. So thank you so much. We want to continue in our worship as we take up our Diamond Day missions offering. All the monies that are taken up do go to support our missions work in Honduras. So if the kids would like to go to the back and get their containers, all the monies do go to support uh, Love and Faith Ministries in Honduras. And oh, by the way, during Vacation Bible School, we took up an offering each night uh, for Honduras as well, and we raised over $500 in Vacation Bible School for missions, so that, that was awesome as well.
Children are dismissed at this time to go to the nursery. No, not to the nursery. We have a nursery. Children are dismissed to go to junior church at this time. And the nursery is open. Usually the uh, Sunday after Vacation Bible School, I give you a synopsis of what the week was all about. I'm not going to do that exactly today, but we are going to continue with the same theme of shining Jesus' light. Shine. That's what it's all about. Shining the light of Jesus. In your Bibles, Matthew 5. Matthew 5 is where we have been over the past eight weeks as we have been looking at the Beatitudes. Well, this morning I'd like to call your attention to Matthew 5. Five, going to skip verses 13 at the moment and go right to Matthew 5, 14. Matthew 5, 14 this morning. Matthew 5, 14 says, You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden, neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead... They put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. So in this passage, let's see, one, two, three, four times light is, is used, and shine is used at least once, if I got them all underlined on the slide that is before you. Let your light shine so that others might see your good deeds and not give glory to you because of it, but to give glory to God, right? Glory to God. You, Jesus said to the Christians, you are the light in the world. Well, I got to thinking about this whole concept of light and the whole use of the symbolism of light that is in the Bible. And I has to ask the question, what does the Bible say about light? Where is light first mentioned in the Bible? Where? In the first sentence. Because and this isn't a direct quote, this is a combination of the first two or three verses, but in the beginning, God said, let there be light. And there was light, and he saw light, and that it was good. Light begins in the beginning. Light has always been something good and positive in the Bible. Light has been a symbol of God himself. Light is a symbol of his children, Christians. It's a symbol of truth, of faith, of righteousness, and on and on. All things that are good and positive. Darkness, on the other hand, is the opposite of every single one of these. Light, darkness. In fact, uh, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the world was void and without form, and darkness covered until God created the light. Now, disclaimer time. I don't want anybody to think that a Christian, that, that you become a Christian by walking in the light. Hear me? You do not become a Christian by walking in the light. To be a Christian, you repent of your sins, you trust Jesus for salvation alone. True faith in Jesus Christ only will change your lives and will, and you will, therefore, and then walk in the light and grow in grace. You got it? <clears throat> you are going to follow the light of the scriptures, not because that following it saves you, but because you are 
the light when you are saved. If you're saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, it's who you are now. You've been made new. You are light. And so the question becomes, are you light? Are you walking in the light? <laughs> D.L. Moody once said, we are told to let our light shine. And if it does, we won't need to tell anybody it does. Lighthouses don't fire cannons to call attention to their shining. They just shine. You like that? I like that. We don't have to go around telling people, hey, I'm a lighthouse. Hey, I'm of the light of the world. Hey, look at me. No, we just shine. We just shine and the world takes notice. So be the light that helps others see Jesus. Now, have you ever wondered why the great men of God in the Bible, like Isaiah and Peter and Paul and others, had great revelations of their own sinfulness? I mean, you read their stories and, and it's like, oh no, I'm a dead man. I've seen the light of God. Well, it's because when you first start seeking the face of God, you get closer and closer to the light. And when you start getting closer to the light, you begin to see more and more of your sin, more than you have ever before. When you first become a Christian, you don't truly understand how sinful you are. But as you start to grow and to seek the knowledge of God, the light of God, the light of Jesus shines brighter and brighter and brighter, and it shows you different areas of your life where you fall short. This is why, as believers, we're to walk in the light continually. Because John reminds us, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another in the blood of Jesus. His Son purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be out without sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. You see, without the light, there is no purpose to this life. Without the light, there is no hope. Without the light, we are alone. And many unbelievers know this and it causes them to struggle. And they have troubles and depression. Without the light, people are dead and blind. You need the light of God because at the light is what reveals everything. When you're in the darkness, you don't know where you're going. You don't understand anything and life doesn't make sense. You can't see. Everything is dark. You're just living. But you don't know what allows you to live and why you live. You need the light. You're here for God. We're here, we were made to worship, right? We were made to believe the light. So believe the light of Jesus Christ and he will show you the truth in everything. When you follow Christ, you will have his light. John, oh my goodness, John, you need to do a whole word study of light and darkness in the gospel of John. And you'll have underlines in your Bible everywhere. Starting in John 8, 12. John 8, 12. If you have your Bibles, I'll just let you find that because you need to see this and read it in your own Bible. John 8, 12. So it's one of the scriptures for this week. I believe it was the first night. The first night when Cosmo, this little star guy, was shining bright. 1 John 8, 12 says, I am the light of the world. That's Jesus speaking. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Isn't that great? Continue on. The next chapter in John, John 9. While I am in the world, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. That's in chapter 9. Go on now to chapter 12. John 12, 35 through 36. John 12, 35 through 36. Then Jesus told them, You're going to have the light just a little longer. 
Walk while you have the light before darkness overtakes you. Whoever walks in the dark does not know where they're going. Believe in the light while you have the light so that you might become children of light. Did you get all that? Believe in the light while you have the light so that you will become children of light. And then a little farther down in that same verse, verse 46, John 12, 46. I have come into the world as a light so that no one who believes in me should stay in darkness. Light, darkness. And then Acts, Acts 26, 18. Starts mid-sentence to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God. Well, there's the contrast right there. Darkness to light, Satan to God. So that they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. I am the light of the world, Jesus says. Now let me tell you a little bit about this transforming light of Christ. When you repent and when you put your trust in Christ alone for salvation, you will be a light. Not only will you see everything more clearly, but the light will come to live inside you and the light of the gospel begins transforming you. So not only do you receive the light, you become the light. No, it's not your light. It's the light of Christ shining in you. We say that every Christmas at our candlelight service. We light our candles from the light, uh, the, the Christ candle, which represents Christ, the light of the world, and we all become a light. But it's not our light. It's the light of Christ shining in us. So when we say be the light, it's all about the light of Christ shining in us. First, uh, 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 4, 6 says, For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, that's what he said at the very beginning of time, right? May God made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. That's talking about this transforming light of Christ where we become light Acts 13, 47, for this is what the Lord has commanded us. I have made you a light for the Gentiles. Oh, by the way, when Jesus was first born and he was presented at the temple eight days after he was born, remember Simeon? Simeon comes up to him and he says, now I can die because I have seen the glory of God. I have seen the Messiah who is going to be a light to the Gentiles, a light to the world. And whenever the Jews said Gentiles, they were just saying everyone else in the world, to the world. Yeah. So, what does your life say? Have you been changed by the light of Jesus? Or are you still living in darkness? There's only two places to live. You either live in the darkness or you live in the light. You're either a child of the darkness or a child of the light. Has the light of Christ so touched you that you now seek to walk in it? Are you light? Examine yourself right now. Are you bearing fruit? If you're still living a lifestyle of sin, Christ's light is not in you, and it hasn't changed you. You're still in darkness. So it's time to repent and put your trust in Christ. Ephesians 5, 8 and 9 says, For you were once darkness. You were once, you were not in the darkness. You were once darkness. But now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. For the fruit of light consists of all goodness, righteousness, truth. And we could tack on Galatians 5.22. For the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Yeah. 
She had to sing that, by the way, to, to get it, but she was. <laughs> it's a great way to memorize scripture, by the way, is to, to put it to, to, to song. Make a verse out of it. Make a song out of it. So, therefore, we are the light of the Lord in a world full of darkness. You will be a light to others. Your light should shine so bright that people look at you and say, you're different. Remember, Dad gave me a book many years ago called, the title was, I Met a Man with a Shining Face. I Met a Man with a Shining Face. It was all about how a, a man had been introduced to a man who was... Uh, living out the holiness of God in his life. And the Shekinah glory of God was present in the man's, in who he was, and just in his, his presence. Now, does that mean you act anything different than what you are and try to, to appear righteous to others? No, not at all. You're out to glorify God, not yourself. This just means that you live who you are. You live as light. Even a little light makes a huge difference. You know, one of the things that we did this week is we had these little uh, candles, one little, this little glow, uh, flicker light is what they're called. Tiny, tiny little light. I mean, if you want to find where a, a, a flicker light is like a, a flashlight, one of these little uh, flashlights that's on its last leg of a battery, that's how much light it gives out. It's not much at all. But you uh, turn that on in a dark room, and it makes a difference. And you turn on 10 or 15 of them in a dark room, and it makes a lot of difference. Just a little bit of light makes a difference. You may be the only light that someone else ever sees. You've heard you may be the only Bible someone else ever reads. Same thing. You may the, uh, be the only light some people ever see. Some people are going to be able to see Christ through your light. People will notice and they appreciate the little things that you do as you shine your light. Uh, on, on two different occasions, I specifically see these two gentlemen and they have repeatedly told me about the first time that they met me. Uh, on two occasions, I've been down on my hands and knees cleaning up a spill or picking up trash in the foyer of the church when a visitor would walk in. It's the first time I met these gentlemen, and they were so surprised to find out that I was the pastor doing that kind of manual labor. So surprised that the pastor would be doing that. So surprised, and I found out later how impressed they were by my willingness just to, to do a little thing. I didn't think anything about it. I didn't look and say, oh, here comes a visitor. I'm going to get down there and start picking up trash. No, I wasn't doing that. Had no idea they were walking in the door, but I'm just picking up some trash or cleaning up a spill, and they walk in. Years later, those two gentlemen are still talking about it. You never know how some small act of kindness, small act of service will shine your light of Jesus to others. Peter, writing to uh, believers in 1 Peter 2, 9 says, You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession. We hear that all the time, right? This is who we are in Christ. Man, that's great. We're a chosen race, royal priesthood, holy nation, a people of God's own possession, so that, why? What's the purpose? of So that you may proclaim the experiences of Him who has called you out of darkness into His Marvelous light. Oh, we sing a song about marvelous light. A song back a few years ago, Shine, make them wish that they were not on the outside looking in. Shine. Shine your light before men. Shine. So we've been looking at... Um, Matthew 5, 3 through 10, recently, right? Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Who are the poor in spirit? Those who are letting the light of Christ shine in their lives, right? Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Who are those that mourn? They're letting the light of Christ shine through their lives. 
Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Who are they? Those that are allowing the light of Christ to shine in their life. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Who are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness? Those that are walking in the light as he is the light, and they're wanting to keep walking in the light and to receive more and more of the light. You know how if you are in a dark place and you're walking towards a tunnel of light, as the closer you get to that, the more light there's going to be. So you're walking in the light as you're walking towards it and Oh, I don't know why I thought about this. It's a, it's a strange phenomenon. When you walk from our house to the church at night, you're walking in darkness. And I, you can't see the ground as you walk from our house to the church. But when you turn around and walk from the church to the house, you can see the lights of the intersection, the lights of all of the businesses around are shining this way. So when we're in the dark, walking towards the light, there's darkness, but we're walking towards the light. But when we get to the light and we turn around, we're walking in the light. It's just interesting. Walk in the light as he is the light. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall be shown mercy. Who are the merciful? Those that have the light of Jesus shining in them. Blessed are the poor in heart, for they will see God. Now, by now, you can repeat the next line, right? Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the light, the children of light. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness because of the light in their lives, because theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Then what does Jesus say next? You are the salt of the earth, and you are the light of the world. The verse I began with. You are the light of the world. A town that is built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it shines to everyone in the house in the same way. Don't light your light and put it under a bushel, under a basket. Don't light your light and live down in the valley. Let your light shine because you are light before others, that they might see your good deeds, your acts of mercy, your acts of kindness, your acts of love, your acts of compassion, your acts of service, your acts of mercy, your acts of righteousness. And not give glory to you because you're just a light. You know, we, we really aren't a light source. We're more like the moon, right? We're more like the moon. A full moon, man, a bright moon, full bright moon. It's a pretty light, pretty bright light. I mean, you, you find a, a full moon on a cloudless night, and there's enough light to cast a shadow. But that moon has no light of its own. It's just reflecting the light of our sun. And that's how we are. I mean, we can shine a bright light. We're just the reflection of the light of Jesus in our lives. Shine. Let your light shine before others that they might see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen. Let your light shine. Shine Jesus' light. That's what it's all about. Shining Jesus' light. This whole moonscape, this whole shine, everything is all about Allowing the light of Jesus to shine in you, first of all, so that you might be saved, but second of all, so that others might see Jesus in you and be drawn to him. It's like we're, we're the bug light in a dark world. Others are drawn to the light. <laughs> Why not? Let's stand. Heavenly Father,
You know our hearts. You know whether we're shining for you or not. Um, we know whether we're shining for you or not. And I just pray, God, that you would just, just speak to our hearts. And then if there be anything in our life that is causing us to remain in the shadows, to remain in the darkness, that you would just shine your light upon us. Father, we give you the glory, we give you the honor. We pray this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Now we're going to sing Waymaker. You say, well, why Waymaker? Well, what does the chorus say? Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are a light in the darkness. place today. I pray that you would shine the light of Jesus in each of our lives so that we might be a light to those living in a lost and dark world. 
Father, we just honor you. We give you the praise. We thank you for the light of the world. We thank you for Jesus Christ. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you.